Hi. Is it time? Hmm. Sorry. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, increased industrial capacity and expanding networks of communication and transportation in the United States meant that companies needed to find new ways to reach customers nationwide. Developing a recognizable brand identity was a great way to put a face on a company and a product that often came from very far away. Companies used different characters that were often cute or funny to make their products stand out and to keep people coming back for more. Some of these characters have lasted decades because of their popularity, and that includes one of our newest collections items, a guy you might actually recognize, Mr. Peanut. Today we're going to do something really special and cool. This is a crate, and in it is Mr. Peanut. Today we're joined by Ms. Kathleen Franz, who's actually a professor at American University. She's here to work on our American Enterprise Exhibition, which will be opening up in 2015, because she has particular expertise in the kinds of things that are inside this box, advertising history. But first we have to actually get inside the box, so we're joined by a second person, Ms. Jane Fortune, who is a collections manager here at the museum. All right, so Jane, there is one <laughs> pin left sticking out of this box. Can you help us yes. get it out? The moment of truth is another one. Yes. So this is Mr. Peanut. This particular Mr. Peanut is made out of cast iron and weighs over 300 pounds. So we're not gonna take him fully out of the box because I'm not that strong. So Kathleen, can you tell us, tell us a little bit more about this Mr. Peanut? I mean, this is by far the biggest Mr. Peanut I have ever seen. It is a big Mr. Peanut. It was a fence-sitter peanut, probably cast in the 1920s or 1930s. We know that it probably came from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, where planters had a factory. And there were a number of these sitting on fence posts around the factory. Oh, okay. So it was advertising, outdoor advertising. This guy looks a little different than what we see on TV now. Mm -hmm. If he's been around since the 1920s, I assume maybe he's a little older than that. What do we know about him? Well, we know he's one of the earliest advertising icons. So as a trade, both a trademark and a spokes character. Planters, which has a very long history, started in 1906, and about 10 years later, they ran a contest for a trademark. And a 14-year-old schoolboy in Virginia, where planters had a peanut growing um, operation and factory, roasting factory, um, drew Mr. Peanut um, in a form similar to the one you see here, and sent it off and won the contest. If Mr. Peanut arrives in about 1916, then is he the first of his kind, did you say? Or were there others kind of like him? No, the field uh, is getting crowded quickly. So okay. advertising really takes off in the 1880s, 1890s. Um, mm -hmm. There are firms that are earlier than that. But he um, is one of a, a group of early advertising spokes characters. Okay. And he is, of that group, one of the most consistent. So he's changed a little bit in his form over mm -hmm. time. <laughs> and this is a very um, mid 20th century kind of version, early 20th century version of Mr. Peanut. By the 1880s, 1890s, uh, American production and factories for all sorts of goods, but in particular food and other kinds of packaged goods, is exploding. Okay. Um, so there's becoming a national mass market, and the producers of those goods, along with advertisers, want to tell Americans to choose a branded good. So this is the okay. origin of brands. But really, advertising had taken off. So when our 14-year-old schoolboy draws the Mr. Peanut drawing and sends it in um, to planters, their ad firm gives him, a, dresses him up a little bit. So the original okay. drawing is basically Mr. Peanut with a cane, uh, a planter, but he gets a top hat and a monocle, and he basically gets the the New Yorker the treatment. <laughs> he gets the gentrification, the exactly, <laughs> to tell you that it's a sophisticated product, and he's a sophisticated kind of guy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, and check us out online to make sure you catch our next episode at AmericanHistory.si.edu or on YouTube. See you then. <laughs>